Hello everyone again. This tutorial is going to be about inventor assemblies and doing the Soma Cube on Inventor. This is a not a very complicated tutorial, but students get confused on it quite often. The most common question is that students make this first cube. But they immediately ask the question, how do I make more cubes or duplicate this to put them together? We're going to address all those things today, starting with making the base cube. If you're not sure what a sample cube is, I have an assignment of making these five blocks that it can assemble together to make this cube. There are other cube designs online if you want to find another kind of some, but it's a kind of puzzle block where you have a certain number of blocks that secretly assemble together to make a cube. Uh, if you want to find your own design, that's fine. Some have five pieces, some have seven. The kind I use is, has five different pieces. So first thing you have to do in Inventor is make a new part you have to make the one block by itself. So I'm just going to here make a rectangle. This is going to be our cube. It's just going to be one inch by one inch. Pretty simple. Uh, finish that sketch and extrude it. It's going to be one inch. Okay, to make this a little bit more interesting, I would suggest either adding a fillet to the edges or adding a chamfer just to make it a little bit more unique. I'm going to do a fillet on mine and I'm going to do that whole thing. This is going to kind of round off the edges. It's going to be pretty nice. I'm going to do 1 16th. Okay, so we have a kind of block with rounded sides. That would be nice. Now we're going to save this. I would suggest making a new folder here and just calling this Soma Cube. Inventor is a little bit picky about where you save your files and what you save your files as. In order to prevent all those headaches, if you save everything in the same folder and never change the name and never move things, Inventor will stay happy. So be in that folder. I'm going to call this the base cube. Save. This is going to be the part file. Now we're done. You're finished here. You're not duplicating this. You're not making any more. We're done here. We can close this file. What we're going to do now is open a new file. This time we're not going to do a part, we're going to go down a level to the assembly. On the assembly you can enter in many copies of the same part and assemble them together, which is what we're going to do. Okay, so here's our blank assembly file. Like always, the first button we click is the upper left corner. Right now it says place. You want just a regular place. And I'm going to go and find that folder and the base cube that I just barely saved. Let's open that. I'm just going to put it in one copy. I'm going to put in a couple more. And I know from this that I need um, a certain number of blocks for each one of these. So if I want to make this piece right here, I can see I need one, two, three, four, five, six blocks. So I'm going to place in six blocks. Okay, now you'll notice that this first one I entered in, it has this push pin. This push pin means that this is grounded. It cannot move. It's the base. We're going to be attaching all these other blocks to this block because that's the first one. It was the grounded one. So let's first make this kind of L shape right there. The way you assemble things in Inventor is this constrain button right there. There's many different types of constraints. It's not, not actually that difficult. Let me explain the, the two main types. With a normal kind of assembly, there's a mate and there is a flush. There's other kinds of tangential and insert constraints, but we're, we're just going to do with these kinds of mates. So when you click on one of these faces, for example, that one, you'll see the face turns a color, and there's also an arrow that points away from that face right there. A mate, you can see these arrows, same thing right there. Those arrows are going to point at each other, and they also the face is going to um, be on the same plane or touch. So I want that face to touch this face. So it'll snap together. You can see a little bit of the blue face there, and that's going to touch this yellow face right there. Those two faces are facing each other, the arrows point at each other, and they also touch. Okay, so apply. The other kind of constraint is a flush, and it's the second button right there. If you have ever gone to a library and either pushed the books backwards or pulled the books forward so that the front of the books all line up, that is making the books flush. So if I click on the sides here, it takes both these arrows. It says the arrows have to point the same direction. Now so I'm going to do that to the top. Do that, scoot it down a little bit. And OK. OK, now this is the base block. I couldn't move that before. This one, I cannot move anymore. OK, with this three 
two flushes and a mate, I can't move this anymore. It's kind of locked in space. I can still move these. They have no constraints on them. But this has enough constraints that it cannot move anymore. So now I'm going to take one block and put it on top of there. So I want a mate that touches part of there. I can still move this around a little bit. It can slide, but those two faces are going to be touching all the time. Now I'm going to do a flush. And I can only slide back and forth. And then a flush on the other side. And now it can't move at all. Okay. This block needs to belong... Um, well, let's look. It needs to belong right there. I don't want to put it right there. I need this block there first, and then I'll attach this. Attach that block there, and then this block is going to go kind of right there. So let's assemble that in. Constrain. Those mate. Apply. The sides flush. Apply. If we look at the bottom, those flush and apply. Okay, now we can attach this block on. We do mate. This touches that. Apply. The tops can line up. And the sides can line up. Now this needs to go in the middle. Just right there. So let's rotate around so you can see that. And just like that. Okay, and apply. And I'm also going to flush the bottoms so those line up. Now, with that, this block can still slide back and forth because it's not constrained fully yet. We need to add one more. But this one might be a little bit more tricky. And before, we've lined up two faces like these two sides. But for this block right here, we can't see the sides of that to click on it to make this flush to that block. It needs to be next door to this one, but we don't have anything to click on. There's a couple ways we can fix this. It's actually not that complicated. Instead of using that block, we can use this one. That's just fine. It will work perfectly fine. We can also say I want to mate this with that face. Okay, the arrows point at each other. They do line up. That will work perfectly fine. These blocks do not have to touch in order to be mated together. Your other option is to constrain. I'm going to flush the ends together, but we don't want this to block to be right there. If you see this box had an offset, offset means it's going to line up, but one's going to be pushed backwards a little bit. So if you do offset of 0.2, it's going to scoop back 0.2. If you do offset of 0.8, it's going to scoop back 0.8 inches. I want it to scoop back one inch, which is exactly where I want it to be, and hit OK. And now this one cannot slide anymore. Okay. If you ever enter a constraint by accident and you don't want it to be there, if you click on the plus sign next to one of these, you'll see all of the mates that one of these blocks has. If one's causing trouble, you can just delete it very easily. Um, if you ever enter a constraint that Inventor isn't happy with, so if I try to mate those two, this box will pop up that says it's not happy. Uh, this constraint will conflict with existing constraints. So I'm just going to cancel this one. You can, depending on what your problem is, you can figure out what you're supposed to do. Now I have one of these blocks done. I'm going to save this. Or actually, I'm going to give it a material first so it looks kind of like a piece of wood. And then we're going to save this. I'm going to call it save this in the same folder as I did before in the Soma Cube. And I'm going to call this block one and save. Now, to finish all these, how many files will you need until you are done? Okay, we already made one base block and we've already made one assembly. If you think about this, how many files will you need by the time you're done? You'll need one block, you'll need five assemblies for each one of these blocks, and then one more assembly, and you put each of the five in so you can try to assemble the, the, the block as a, as a puzzle cube. Uh, so for a five-block puzzle, you will need seven files in total by the time you're done. If you are doing a seven Soma Cube variation, you will need nine files t in total. So in this folder right here, right now, we just have the base cube and the block. By the time we're done, we will have all seven. If you need more help than that, then you know where to find me.